K. Smith from WPSecurity.com. Thank you all for showing up here. Uh, cut me some slack. I've been down on Martha's Vineyard for three weeks. I'm in total chill mode. And I got up here in the middle of that rainstorm that was very brief. And it's like, you know, so uh, I'll catch up to you guys in a minute. You've also been at it for a couple of hours. Uh, let me get some hands here. How many people here have like small sites, solo sites, you know, small, you know? Oh, most of the room. Wow. How many people here do big sites? Corporate sites? Ed sites? Okay, there'll be something here for you too. How many people here are developers or designers? Oh, jeez, Louise, this is great. Okay. Well, this is WordPress security facts and fiction. The facts are going to come from me, and the fiction is going to come from you. Because there's so many things that people believe. There's so many sub, quote unquote, sources of information about WordPress security. Most of it's a lot of crap and rehash. They read something and say, oh, I can do this. So I'm going to take you to some pure methods that we use. We believe less is more. Okay? And what I'm going to show you is some things that will protect 60% of probably the WordPress installs out there. It won't protect everything, and I'll get into why in a little bit. But um, I think you'll, you'll be pretty much okay. Multiple layers of security. Let me give you a little bit of my background first. I, um, I started in e-commerce in 97, 98. I went to NYU, and one of my professors was an MBA, JD, and I'm like, why are you teaching here? He says, I do consulting, and I'm looking for people for teams. Would you like to join the team as marketing? I have a marketing background. So I started doing e-commerce consulting in 98. We, the first thing we did was start playing with SEO, hiding words in background, that stuff worked back then. I mean, you know, we invented some of the early SEO methods. I mean, it, you know, we used to slam, and it would take them about a year. This is pre-Google. This was, you know, this was back in the meta crawler days. Um, and so it would take them about a year to figure it out, and then they'd figure it out, and they'd for life. Um, I started doing consulting on my own in 2000, and of course started buying domain names and building affiliate sites, because it was wide open 10 years ago. You could get great domain names for 35 bucks and then bulk register for $15, $10. So we started building affiliate sites. We started doing consulting. 2007, uh, my assistant, Kathy, who's still with me, she's been working with me all this time. Kathy calls me up, and she's crap it on at the house. And she's like, you got to go get on and look at the sites. you know. And I'm like, what do you mean? And where is it? We found things like this all over our sites. Yeah, hopefully you've never seen anything like this, OK? But, I mean, literally, the, uh, you know, the attackers that come in, here's another one, here's another one, here's another one, look at this thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the call you don't want to get. That's not what you want to see, you know, on your side or one of your clients' side. Yeah. I mean, that's really the last thing you want to see. And we, I, I can't find the animated ones. I have someone to jump in the hands. Network. Okay? Now, what's my network? Well, you know, 
your PC or your Mac is your workstation. You know, your ISP or wherever you connect, that's your, you know, that's your network, and you know, your uh, website's out on the server, and that's your server, and then you've got all of your, you know, visitors that come to the site. So protect your network, because on the web, somebody is always listening. And what do I mean by that? It's called sniffing traffic. One of the easiest things to do is to find an unprotected server, put up a sniffer, and just sniff all the past packet traffic that's passing through. And guess what? FTP, like I said, 15, 20% are drive-bys. We call those drive-bys because they're sitting out there doing something else and your little data drives by and they just take it off. Because guess what? FTP does not, you know, well, you see around. FTP is like screaming your information out of the window. Regular FTP is not encrypted. Okay? Whoa! It sends your password, username is plain text. Whoa! So, you know, you're probably safe from yelling out of the window because there's probably nobody there to hack the WordPress sites outside your door. So, use SFTP, secure FTP, secure shell. Use this code for forcing SSL admin. Okay? If you don't have, if you're doing client sites, you can get an SSL certificate now for 30 bucks, 50 bucks. Free, even there, even. So, is it free? You know? So, I mean, we, we stick it on a client site, and we might, we might tell them it'll cost this to renew, but we don't even tell them that we're doing it. We don't tell them, oh, we're going to charge you for an SSL. We just do it, you know? And definitely start using the SSL. If your web hosting company does not offer Secure Shell or SFTP, you need a new hosting company. And no excuses. I don't care what they tell you, they're full of crap. Find, find a new hosting company. They should be offering that and or you need to migrate everything. You've got to connect securely because otherwise it's just a waste of time. This eliminates so much of the threat and the risk. Okay? It's not sexy and it's not a bunch of plugins and stuff. It's basic security regarding things. Passwords. My God, I use 14 characters. You know? See, bad. My daughter's name. Do not do that. Underneath. You know, mnemonic for my daughter's name. Okay? <laughs> The top one, we can crack the top one in about 30 minutes. Okay, my team can do that in 30 minutes. We're not really, really happy. So 30 minutes, we can crack something like that top one. The bottom one, I think it's something like 90,000 hours of computing, maybe on like a supercomputer or something, and maybe you get it. It might be more like 140,000 hours. Bottom line, is people can do that. They're not cracking WordPress sites. They're busy breaking into banks and the government. Okay? Really, really. You know, so... Please, start using long passwords, and if you think that's a joke, and, oh, DK's kind of, you know, he's a security guy, so he's all uptight about it, uh-uh. Uh-uh. You either start doing that, or expect to get that. Okay, sooner or later. Layer 3 I call Security 101, which is the good old stuff that you read most places. Please change the database names from WP. Please don't use WP. Make it anything, you know? Now WordPress in the core now, it, you know, it asks you for a username. Do you know how many times we go to sites and people have used admin? They put it back in. <laughs> Do not use admin. That's like one of the standard. I mean, most of the problems that come in, in terms of attacking WordPress sites are script kiddies. They're people that are out there lurking on the hacker sites, kids. I mean, we see so many hacks that happen between 2.45 and 4.35 o'clock. That's when the kids get home and when the parents get home. And in that window, we can, we, you know, we, I mean, we, over the years, we've done thousands of sites, cleanups and protects. So I'm talking based on probably about 1,600 sites that we've done now, about 600 cleanups. We just finished the worst cleanup ever. It was three WordPress installs in one site. They didn't use multi-site. And they, the guy got in, and he had top, he, she, wherever it was, the guy did. They had, like, weeks. Every single file had, you know, malicious code in it, and it wasn't just about, you know, deleting the files, because we delete them, and he had put backwards into the database, and it would come back. So we had to inspect everything. So you really just, you know, please change that database name. Do not use admin. Block all folders, you know. People don't do this, and here's what happens. I love it when I go to somebody's site. Where is it? Here somewhere. Oh, here it is. I love it when I go to somebody's site, fly inside, they go, oh, my site, I, you know, I install some plugins, and I'm looking at all their content. <laughs> you know? We don't, I don't like the uh, monkey or folder thing. I, you know, we put, we tell clients just put everything in one big folder. It's all dated anyway. Because every time the uh, WordPress creates a new folder, it, you know, you've got to protect it. There are some HD access tricks and some other things you can use. It gets too, too much for this presentation. But you've got to block them. You really don't want people seeing it. 
you know, what's in there. I mean, it's just a privacy issue, but it also has implications for security. It's a way to get in. It tells, it tells them a lot of things about what to program around in terms of your site. So block all folders. This is, this is 101 kind of stuff. I mean, this is like basic. Plugins. Less is more. This is the only three that we recommend. Login, lockdown, WordPress, firewall, and we're, we build one called intrusion. Intrusion tells us when somebody's probing around and looking at folders and things that they shouldn't be looking at. And so, you know, that's about it. You know, I'll leave, I know there's questions about this at the end, we'll do questions. But that's about it. You don't need all those others. Everybody's writing a plugin that has something to do with WordPress. They're all crap. <laughs> Simplicity. Keep it simple. Keep it really simple. Yeah, this is intrusion. That's, that's my site. And somebody is, is going through the WP content and they're looking for certain plugins. They're looking for, I don't know, PHP, Stevie, whatever. These must be plugins that either have defects. This is probably a bot. But somebody sets the bot up. So it's looking for, like, I guess, plugins that probably have, you know, some kinds of flaws or something in them. So it hit my site on the 17th after midnight, and this, these come in, this is my email program, my spam program. So all of these pop in. So that's the intrusion plugin, and I'm going to, we'll have that on my site. I'll put it. To, my PowerPoint crash, so this is my uh, Word document that I used to make the whole PowerPoint. I can add some things to it when I put it up on the site, so I'll, I'll give you a link to get the intrusion. And basically, that's just an alarm. It's a very simple alarm. But if you see things like WP content and plugin folders coming up, somebody's probing your site. You can block that by IP address. You can, you know, you can watch the IP address. If you start getting that a lot, you can block them out. Really simple to do. Uh, fiction. Fiction usually comes from people, things people heard, things people believe, and things people think they know. So the fiction part, I leave to you questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you think about developing uh, like a game site or something, something like that on WordPress? Is it a no no or there ways that you can do that? I would bifurcate the site. I would split off and maybe do the marketing, the front end, and WordPress, but I wouldn't do the processing. No, 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 but just the front end site. You can do the front end, but you need a lot more. This, this will protect, let me back, this will protect 60% of WordPress sites, maybe 70. Yeah. This keeps out the script kiddies and the low level people. All right. If someone is intent on getting into your site, you need a lot more than what I just went into here. It could be an all-day kind of a thing. We do a lot with HD access. You know, we do a lot of redirects. We do a lot of alarms because intrusion is really important. And I don't mean one of those things that compares the files. Oh, the files have shifted. It's too late when the files have changed. I want to know when they're knocking. I mean, it's like, you know, if you have a burglar alarm, I don't want a video of like, what they're doing in the house. I want a video outside that says somebody's trying to get in. So a lot of the plugins are after the fact. So a bank site, I, I might, I probably would, you know, it just because unless they, well, they've got the chops and pay for maintenance and pay for vigilant security, but you need to have monitoring. You need to have, I think, two sources of monitoring. I mean, you really have to gear it up. We've done some really big, heavy e-commerce sites, and there's a balance there between usability and, and security, and you have to watch that balance. You know, so I don't know about a bank. Also, I wouldn't want to take on the liability, the legal liability. I mean, you know, we have like five million bucks worth of insurance, but I don't know. That wouldn't go far in that side. You know, and you, if you do this for clients, don't forget, you're liable. So all of you that are just freelance web designers, you have some business insurance someplace, because this is serious stuff. If somebody's making money on their site, if it's an institution, not even a bank, if it's a company or a corporation, you know, you're liable. You don't just do the design job because you have this little design contract and say, hey, that's it, I'm done. You know, somebody cracks into the site, they have downtime, they lose money, you are liable. So know what you're doing. Yeah. The question? Yeah. You can use WordPress, you can get an SSL certificate and run those donation pages, run the PayPal connection, run all that on the SSL. You can use PayPal. There's PayPal and there's any number of options. You know, there's, there's a couple of proprietary, like, donation kind of systems and stuff, but run it on this, run, you know. I mean, if you have a certificate and you do some of the things I've talked about, you're forcing the whole admin. When you log in, it'll be secure. The whole admin runs secure. So you've got an SSL certificate. Put the contact forms on it. Make people feel more comfortable. I come from a marketing background. I really come from more of affiliates. Like, after we got cracked, then I was like, this is never going to happen again. So that's when I got into work for security. But I'm really a marketer and a business person. I do, you know, consulting in big companies. So run contact forms on an SSL. It makes people feel secure. They see the lockdown there and it says the S and stuff. 
It's going to up your conversions. It's going to up your content. I mean, it just can't hurt. You don't have to run the whole site, but anything that involves input, you know, conversion methods, you know, you're asking them to, you know, get a PDF or something like that, run it on the SSL. Go right over there. Over there. No, you can go. This right here. So, speaking specifically about WordPress file architecture, infrastructure, and database information, uh, I've always made the best practice to remove my database information and put it in a separate file, change the WP load files to load that file instead for my database. Is that a good best practice still, or has that been kind of eliminated with 3.2? I know upgrading some sites, I've seen it move it around itself. Yeah, no, that. really. I mean, it's not bad. It's, you know, it's, it's not necessary. It's a little extra work, but if you're used to doing it, I'd say doing it. It's not bad. You know, move the WP config file up a level to the root. You know, delete, oh, WordPress 101, I forgot that one. Delete the install file. You know, there's an install PHP in WP admin, so after you upgrade every single time, go into WP admin, find install PHP, delete it. There's no reason to delete it. You can leave it there. Why not? There's no reason to. It won't do anything when it's there. WordPress All right. wouldn't put it back again if it was okay. Delete it, it can't hurt. Just in case he's not right. <laughs> because security is about protection, and I'd rather feel safe than sorry. So, you know, you don't need it for anything. We've seen a lot of hacks with it. If you're saying now you don't need it, that's fine. We can debate that later. I'd rather be safe than sorry. We're talking about security here. Yes? Yeah, hi. Uh, whoa, that's loud. Uh, I recently had a site uh, that was attacked by offshore scammers, and they were uh, basically hosting. Uh, forms on my site and then sending emails to uh, people saying, you know, you've got an account that you need to provide security information about or something like that. Sure. Is there anything that you've done here that, or anything else that we need to be aware of uh, to help prevent that? Should I be talking to my hosting? Uh, Were they actually about? running through your site and they injected pages? Or, or Yes. Yeah, that's an SQL injection. They had injected code into your site. Right. So, uh, yeah, these things will take care of that. You know, it has to be cleaned up first. But, um, let me see, what specifically will take care of it? The WordPress firewall is really good. That's one of, the, one of the few plugins that I recommend because it sets off an alarm if somebody tries to do an SQL injection. Okay. Are okay. you running the latest versions of WordPress, too? I mean, that's, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. When it happened, you work? I'm sorry? When it happened? Yes. I was, I was running the latest version. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I'd, I'd be interested to take a look. Um, WordPress Firewall helps with that. Actually, there's another one out called WordPress Firewall 2. You know, write that down. I like that one even better. Somebody took the WordPress Firewall. It hadn't been updated. The guys in SEO 8 had lived a little bit north of me in New York. And WordPress Firewall is there. They haven't done anything with it in years. So somebody's tweaked it a little bit. So we've used that. Yeah, that will help with that. Um, that's an injection. I mean, somebody's injected code into your site. I mean, sometimes they do it uh, with links. You know, for SEO purposes, these guys were scamming. Did Google pick it up? Did you get banned? We went uh, Google. Yeah, briefly, temporarily. Briefly. Yeah. 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 These, this will help with that. <coughs> Once again, this is a generic kind of level of protection that will protect in most instances. If somebody's out to get you, you need a lot more. One of the things we're going to do, and I don't know how I'll publicize it to everybody, is we're going to offer to do a model site with kind of a not quite maximum protection, but whatever, at a reduced cost that like designers and developers can take and just use with it. Because you really need to have somebody lead you through it maybe at least one time and show you all the things that can be done with AT access and other things. Is subscribing to subscribing to security.net worth it? They do monitoring. There's a lot of monitoring companies out there. I'd say, yeah, it can't hurt. I don't think much of them particularly. <laughs> but that's a good question, and I'll add some information about monitoring companies. There's some better ones, you know, they, you know, that will, uh, what, what, what type of site, what level of site are we talking about? Just average, low level site? Yeah, they're fine for that. If they were like corporate sites and you know, enterprise sites, they'd say, you know, something a little stronger than that. Uh, Two part question. One is, have you seen significant performance issues when you're implementing some of these types of security tools? No, and that's why we keep it down with the plugins. Okay. And we do a lot of HP access hacks. Um, oh, plugin not to use. If anybody's ever heard of or used stealth login, do not use stealth login. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's a site that hides the login URL, but it'll break the HP access file. 
And unless you really know what to do, sites down, clients freaking out, and you, you know, it might take you. So self-logging is out. There's some HD access code that I don't have here now that you can use to like, you know, hide your login. If you go to any of my sites, you can't you can't find the login. And two for as as find it. All right, go ahead. Uh, for sites that are operating e-commerce stores on WordPress but are using a uh, security certificate, one of the things that concerned us was finding a plugin that enabled the e-commerce tools that were already developed, the, the certifications there, and basically have you experienced specific issues with e-commerce tools um, and, and how well those developers are building those applications with security in mind. Um, we just, like I said, we just did a big e-commerce site. It's not so much that the e-commerce tools cause a problem, and that's why this is all very subjective. I mean, I, I tried to cut a swath up here in the middle that would help most people, you know, protect, you know, the average type of site. E-commerce sites, we end up having to look at them, you know, piece by piece. So I haven't seen anything, but what, what I try to tell people to do is use WordPress for the marketing side. You know, if you've got a really good shopping cart going, I don't like it. Oh, WP e-commerce, stay away from it. You know, if you're already using it, good luck. But if you know, if, you're, if a client comes to you and wants to run, you know, or if you think you can just use WP e-commerce, find another solution. And my biggest issue with them is a horrible support form. And it's got some, like we were trying to, we took this client site, we cleaned it all out, three different WordPress installs all running in the same site. You know, we put in a whole bunch of security. And then we got to the WP e-commerce, and we tried to just upgrade it from the last version, and it just busted everything. We freaked because you know my code is no more than me. I tell you honestly, I I into this, but I've got some coders working for me that hack that are crackers and hackers. You know they, they're reformed now, but they, 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 at least they tell me they're reformed now. If you Google DK Smith, I come up first. Hey, out of 148 million, I've been doing this a long time. Uh, I don't really have a recommendation. Let's see what's happening here. I don't really have a recommendation other than you know not using WP e-commerce. There are other solutions out there. It's just oh, it's just redirecting. Okay, this one is just redirecting. It won't. Um, okay, I thought I said we we set some of these up and we have like funny messages we put up like you know I hear you knocking but you can't come in you get redirected and I thought this my site did that but it doesn't. What do I think of? I don't, yeah, I don't have much of an opinion on, on, on the e-commerce plugins, if you want to know the truth, you know, because I, I, I really don't have a qualified opinion, so I'd rather not say. So, you know. uh, yeah. So I, I'm starting to build a photography site, and I'm going to be hosting a lot of clients' photo galleries. What's a more secure option for hosting that? I don't want someone's two-year-old kid's picture of winding up where it shouldn't be. Do you have any suggestions for image security? I mean, with images, you know, you always just right click and take an image. So what are you going to do? There's some flash. I saw a flash gallery option, and I, I can't, we can't, we'll be able to tell you what it was. Uh, some kind of a WordPress, either plugin or I think it was a plugin that converts the images to flash, and had a nice gallery laid out. And you know, I think you can XML file and you can kind of change the style. And that's really great because you, you know, flash is like you can't right click and take the image. So if you're concerned about images being taken, I, I say look for a flash application. Let's go all the way over to the other side. Back, back here is a gentleman. Yes, right there. So, uh, thinking about uh, force SSL and in terms of like fire sheet and I mean, you're going to be set over you know, public Wi-Fi networks. Um, does force SSL add in cookies or do you have a recommendation? Cookies, you think? Yeah, like the logging of cookies. You know, oh, yeah, it, I mean, it, yes, absolutely. That's why you want to use the force SSL. So, it does set in Yeah, because you're, you're running it. Right? Filezilla, whatever, or an 
any FTP program, use the option that says ask for password. Because guess what? The program stored either a simple hash or it's plain text. If a hacker does get in, he just goes into that. I mean, that's, you know, I go there, that's where all the passwords are. It's really pretty simple, all the way to that. Uh, is it possible, and if so, is it effective to change WP admin or WP content to something else? that people wouldn't know to search for? You can, but some of the plugins, you know, you might have some other plugins. It gets a little weird. Once again, that's one of those ones where we, we do it for site. I usually don't recommend it because, you know, when it's time to upgrade, you really, if a client has the chops to have, like, a real web, a webmaster in addition to having, you know, a WordPress installed, then yeah, fine. But somebody has to really watch that kind of thing. We try to keep it really simple, stupid, you know? We don't, first of all, I mean, unless the client's paying us good money, you don't want to be bothered. And, you know, you're responsible. You don't just do these jobs and walk away. You know, seven months later, the site's going haywire. Well, you paid me, I'm done. It's been seven months. No, it's your, you know, be professional. If you're not already, I mean, I've been in business a long time. I started my first company in 81, you know, so I'm older than I look. Uh, but be professional. I mean, you know, think, especially now on the web, you know, DS stays around for a long time. Yes. Um, I have a answer about the photography thing and uh, also a question of my own. Uh, I would recommend Zenfolio or some SmugMug or some sort of um, photo sharing site for the photography issue. That way the photos aren't actually on your site. You can password protect those and you don't have to actually pay for the storage. On Zen, your Zenfolio? Zenfolio and SmugMug both do, you know, professional people can buy your photos. Print them. Zenfolio can print through MPix. Um, so you don't have, you get paid for the brain, but don't have to deal with it yourself. Um, my uh, question is, uh, is are there any of those plugins you mentioned for security? Yes. Do, do any of them have like password policies? Because it's easy to set the admin password for 14 characters or more for yourself, but how do you deal with you know people who are editors, contributors, so forth, who are going to use? Yeah, you know, a lot of times when we set up sites, we give them passwords and they never change them. So start there. You know, when you, uh, you've done built a site, you've done a site, when you hand it over, you know, uh, give them a complex password and give them a simple three-sentence warning about, you know, passwords. I and mean, it's their site. They want to protect it. If you change this password, give them an example, my daughter's name with all kinds of carrots and stuff and weird stuff in it. After that, you know, it's beyond your control. If they don't get it and they change it to, you know, password, then <laughs> that's on them. But I think you should give them, you know, in, in maybe on your website someplace, have a secure area for clients and have this kind of information. Send them an email about it. If you talk to them, say, hey, you know, remember to use complex passwords. I mean, when you hand these things off, I mean, we give handoff documents. We tell people how to maintain it. We tell them some of the things that we've done. We tell them some of the things they can expect because if it's a complex site, a really big site, something might happen because we can't go to every single page and, you know, every single thing and, and click on everything there. So have a handoff document. Have a, you know, page on your site that talks about, you know, hey, this is what you should do. So then you've done everything as professional that you possibly can, and if they don't follow, so be it. Any more questions? Right back here, the hand up, and then I'll come back up for uh, One of the basic things I tell my clients, and I've had a couple do this, they download these free templates that are loaded with JavaScript garbage in the yeah. So yeah. I think that's another one of the basic things. Absolutely. That's, that's a WordPress 101. Uh, we know a site that actually is it's, it's beautiful. And it really looks like, you know, a really professional theme site. And it's some guy in China who's got malicious code in every single theme on there. And the thing about it is, is you know, hopefully I'm dealing with a room full of professionals here. If, if it's a paid theme and somebody's offering it for free, the alarm bell should go off. This is not a trustworthy person. They've stolen someone else's, you know, you know copyrighted, you know, material, somebody else's code, and they're giving it away. You know. Just put, put the pieces together. It's, it's not rocket science. So, yeah, watch out for a lot of free... I mean, there's so many companies now. Studio, I mean, geez, you know, there's like 20 million, like, you know, and they're, and they're growing every day. So you really don't need to be going to these who knows who sites and downloading things. Um, where? Okay. Right. Do you see any vulnerabilities from third-party plugins, or just contact forms, or void? Oh, it's here. There was an incident just recently with some plugins that were on, w, on WordPress.org. They had malicious code in them. That just happened like a few days ago, or a couple weeks ago. So yes, we see it, you know, yes. I mean, you have to be careful. I mean, you know, I, okay, something else I'll add is like a list of approved plugins, plugins that we've checked out and worked well. 
you know, everybody, uh, plugins are free, so, you know, you go off the beaten path. I just had a client, we told him to use redirection. I don't know if any of you know, redirection plugin. You can put in any URL and it'll redirect to wherever off-site or on your site. It's great if you move things around or you have some weird navigation stuff, issues to, to overcome. And so I told her that, I told her how to use it and showed her on an install how to use it. And then I went to the site, she was having a problem and she used some other redirect plugin. So I'm like, I didn't tell you to use that. All bets are off because I don't know the code that's in there and we're not going to bother to test it. So, you know, and also with plugins in general, less is more. Don't load up a site with plugins. Find some other way to do it. I mean, you know, or just, you know, don't just try not to. When you talk about performance and, and page load times, that's what will really slow it down. I think it's a MySQL database can only have like 30 queries or 40 queries you know, at a time. So every time you've got that PHP code in the next query in the database, and every plugin is doing that. And so if you really want to improve performance, keep the plugins to a minimum. And, you know, go into the themes and hack out something. You know, it says, like, PHP site name. What the heck would it take that out and put the site name in there unless the site's going to change? And, and that's not going to happen. Get rid of those PHP calls wherever you can. You know, you know, I mean, we do pages that look like HTML for home pages sometimes. You know, the index, you know, file, the home PHP file, it looks like almost like straight HTML. Because we've gotten rid of all those PHP files. Less is more. It's simple. Try to always make it simple. Don't get carried away because you're a WordPress developer and a designer. You've already had a turn. Anybody else? You've already had a turn. Yes, right there.